Hey guys, so today we're gonna be doing a quick turtle light guide and uh, ah shit There, I think that's a lot better Hey guys, it's Furious here today giving you a guide to Terrorblade So the reason why I'm coming out with this guide today is is kind of because I feel like this is the type of hero I'm I really enjoy playing Um, I played a lot of him recently and had really really great success with him um, there is definitely quite a bit of a learning curve to Terrorblade as well. So yeah, my goal today is just try to smoothen out that learning curve. Um, or is that even how it works? I don't know. Anyways, you get what I mean. Um, but yeah, for today's video, I'm going to break it down into seven sections. We're going to start with uh, an overview, skill build, item build, how to play lane, how to farm, how to fight, and then we'll finish off with a few tips and tricks. Uh, of course, timestamps to each section will be down below in the description. And without further ado, let's get right into it. Alright, so for those who don't know or haven't played Terrorblade before, um, Terrorblade is basically an agility melee carry. Um, yes, he has an ability that can turn him ranged, but it's only for a limited amount of time, so don't get your hopes too too high. So uh, Valve la uh, labels Terrorblade as a carry hero, and uh, rightfully so, he's pretty much only played in the uh, position 1 role in the safe lane, uh, and nowhere else. Uh, sometimes you'll see maybe Miracle or some high tier pro uh, take a mid uh, for a roll, but uh, it's it's not the most efficient way uh, for Terrorblade to get, like, if you want to get the most out of Terrorblade, take him to the safe lane, get the max amount of farm, and then proceed to just destroy your opponents. Um, it's also labeled as a pusher. You can use his illusions a lot, which we'll get into very soon, um, to push down lanes. His illusions are some of the strongest in the entire game, so um, he, he does that with ease. And finally, Nuker, um, being that he doesn't do a lot of damage AoE-wise, but he does a shit ton of damage on a single target. And he usually, in a full fight late game, will manage to destroy one target, target the next, destroy that target, and so on. So now to get into the uh, abilities, uh, we got four abilities um, like most heroes in Dota. Uh, the first being Reflection. Uh, basically, all this does is you cast on a small AoE on an enemy uh, an invulnerable illusion that slows them for 25% and does like a bit of damage over time. Um, it's probably the weakest out of all of his abilities. Uh, second ability, Conjure Image, creates an illusion of Terrorblade. It does like a shit ton of damage, especially um, in the meta form, which we'll get to uh, his next ability. Uh, but he also takes a lot more damage than usual. So it's basically like a glass can, if you think of it like that. Um, so yeah, we'll get to uh, how to control illusions and stuff like that when we get to farming and fighting. Um, and yeah, how, how to even progress from the laning stage to mid game. Uh, Metamorphosis. Okay, so this is probably one of the most insane uh, level, just like regular abilities in the entire game. Um, it scales really, really well as well. Um, you have a lot of kill threat, level 3. Once you can uh, put a second level into this, you, your bonus damage goes from, I can't highlight over it, from 20 to 40. Um, basically, it turns him into a ranged, uh, in ranged form, and he does bonus damage. He's a bit slower, but... Um, his, he also allows his illusions to go in a ranged form with bonus damage applied to them, as well as uh, their 60% damage, which is quite high for any illusion carry hero uh, in Dota. It's probably the highest, uh, if I'm not wrong. So, and there's also an Aghanim Scepter upgrade that's uh, possible, that gives you an, an additional ability, um, but I'll go get into that later, probably underneath the item build section of this video. Uh, so then we also have Sunder. Sunder basically uh, swaps health with an opponent, or you can do it with uh, a teammate, and uh, maybe something else. Uh, C section seven, some nice tips and tricks. Um, but yeah, I'm not gonna spoil that. That's just cool. Too cool. Something you don't know. Um, so yeah, of course, as each level progresses, you have to be at a minimum percent of HP to actually have the swap uh, initiate and go down. Um, it starts off to 120 seconds, but you can get it all the way to 8 seconds. This is patch 7.27, so 8 seconds with a talent, level 25 talent, asunder, you can swap HP like crazy. Alright, so for the skill build for Terrorblade, um, there's a couple variations that I've seen done in particular, such as like the first three levels um, regarding Conjure Image and Meta, 
um, when you take your Sunder is another one, and then the Talent Tree, and that's all usually based up on match matchups. Um, but for the most part, the skill build I'm going to be doing here is the one you're going to be going for literally 80 to 70, 70, 80% of the games. This will be the best way you can farm fast in the early game and then demolish mid to late game with those item timings, which is again, the whole goal of Terrorblade. It's a very, very good late game hero. All right, so starting off with level one, you want to take meta. The bonus range is the main reason why uh, you can hit creeps from a range and you still do bonus damage, which is another plus. Um, allows you to just last hit creeps so much easier. You want to pop this as soon as the first wave uh, meets, you want to pop this and then just last hit. Um, if the enemy offlaner comes up to try to contest, um, you can tap them a couple times and then uh, then you can basically, they'll be like, oh shit, you do a fuckload of damage. I'm going to back off. And then you go back to your last inning. Um, so it's relatively straightforward there. Um, just keep in mind, it's a 155 second cooldown. So like as soon as you use it, make use of it. Don't just use it and just kind of like hang around. You know what I mean? Um, no, you want to be doing literally right clicking almost all the time. Um, so if you're not right clicking the creeps, right click the heroes, get them off the lane, right? Um, and then, yeah, that's, that's the best way to, to play with meta level one. Um, I've sometimes seen Conjure Image leveled up level one. If you do you level it up, try to level it up before you go into the lane uh, and you know that you have an easy matchup, basically. There are two situations, so either they have a really weak off laner that can't really contest you for whatever reason, or if your position five that's supporting you is really strong and can basically 1v2 the enemy off laner and enemy position four. Um, then you can go conjure image. If you spawn the image or the illusion 30 seconds before the horn of marking the start of the game, then you can try to even deny their bounty rune. Do some shenanigans there. Um, but yeah, overall, if you can get away with it, go with the conjure image level one, uh, but you won't get away with it like 90% of the time. So that's why you take meta level one. All right, but we're going to keep going with our uh default guide so then you go here 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 all the way to level eight now i've seen some variations again you can go this level three level four it really depends on when you pop meta if for whatever reason you hold meta then you you just keep in mind it's if you pop it level two it's still on cooldown for 155 seconds so there's no, no point in leveling it up on level three i sometimes forget this but i usually pop it level one so i don't have to um so yeah you just go all the way you forget reflection is a thing you don't touch reflection until you absolutely have to uh sunder all right so now you can finally level up sunder at level nine this is your ultimate um you can level it up earlier like level six level seven level eight uh you can sometimes hold the point it really depends if for whatever reason you are fighting or you find yourself in a fight where they're diving you into tower and it can make basically just allow you to live then uh, you can level it up, of course. Um, but otherwise, you want to maximize your farm, and that's why you whole, wholeheartedly go with just Conjure Image and Meta Metamorphosis, because those things um, allow you to farm at a well, one of the fastest speeds in Dota. And yeah, after that, you go into your talent tree. You have the difference between, or sorry, the choice between um, 20 movement speed or 16% evasion. Basically, you ask yourself one simple question. Are you getting hit a lot in the fights? Or um, are they going on you a lot? Like, if they are, 16% evasion. And if you still think you're going to get away with not getting hit late game, then you can go 20 movement speed. You know what I mean? So I would still say 70, 60, 70, 70% 70 of the time, take the 16% evasion. Um, otherwise, take the 20 movement speed. It's very rare that you're going to be have you're going to have to chase someone for a kill. You you don't want to find yourself chasing um, kills. Your team should be there to lock them down. That's the whole reason uh, why you pick Terrorblade. Usually, when you're pause one, you'll have last pick, um, and you can pick around your team. Don't pick Terrorblade if you don't have enough lockdown on your team because then you can't do the damage. They're just going to cut your meta as soon as meta's off cooldown. Then they'll come and attack you, and then you're dead. Then uh, level 11 rolls around, you take Reflection, because that's when you absolutely have to take Reflection, because there's no other thing to take. Um, 
then you take your Sunder, level 12, finish off Reflection until uh, the third point, because then you have the option to the Talent Tree again. You have the option between 25 attack speed and 250 health. 250 health is 80% of the time the better option, um, so pick that. Uh, reason being, it can be the difference between you not getting a Sunder off in a fight and getting it off and turning it around and winning it single-handedly sometimes on like a very uh, precious core on the enemy, enemy, enemy team, say you're 1v1ing or in the fight, because usually you're the two damage dealers. Um, so if you can stay alive longer in the fight by having by getting off that Sunder, then it's a really good thing. Uh, so if you think about it like that, the 250 health talent is definitely better. Uh, 25 attack speed, if you can get away with it, so you're, they're not getting on, uh, getting on top of you as often, then you can go 25 attack speed. It's obviously the greedier option, but if you can get away with it, by all means, take it. After level 15, you can go take, uh, what is it, this talent, I guess? Oh, no, no, what am I saying? You finish off Reflection, uh, then whatever talents, you get level three on your Sunder, finally, and then level 19 on the talents, you get to choose between uh, Conjure Image, eight seconds, and plus eight all stats. So not eight seconds on your conjure image, it's plus eight seconds uh, to your additional time. So it would make it from 34 uh, seconds duration to 42 seconds. I'm doing the math for you, look at that. Um, this helps a lot and you're gonna take this more more often than not, um, just because it helps so much with split pushing. And Terrorblade is such a good pusher. His illusions do such a great job of doing it just because they're so high damage. As I said, they're the highest in the game in terms of illusion damage. So that's why pushing lanes is really effective. The plus eight seconds makes the whole difference. They can clear out a whole other wave. They can clear out a whole another two camps or whatever. So definitely take the plus eight second uh, conjured image duration. There are situations, however, where you can take the plus eight all stats. It's really, again, are your illusions getting killed really easily in fights thanks to like some Jakiro or, um, or for whatever reason, are you being focused um, a lot? You need those eight all stats, then uh, you take the plus eight all stats. But more often than not, you take the plus eight second conjure image. I feel like I said plus eight so many times in that sentence. Uh, I apologize. Uh, but moving on, we're going to go uh, level 21, get the rest of the talents. Then you have the option between minus 32 seconds Sunder cooldown. And you're like, hey, eight seconds Sunder. That sounds pretty good. I can just swap whatever result I want. But if you compare it to actually being further away from your opponent, remember how I, how I touched on um, level one. Sure, at this stage of the game, they're going to have items. But for them, for you even sieging, um, step, just being on the low ground and sieging with Metamorphos from such a safe distance, it's ridiculous. Like they, they have to come out and greet you and then they're fighting on your low ground and then you have the advantage in the fight all of a sudden, right? Um, so if you think about just the range and you can really make use of the range, um, then definitely take it. And you're going to be taking it like I take it 90% of the time. The only time I take this is when I know I can get it off within a fight. It's a long grueling fight. Those are those like those crazy fights that are like a minute and a half, two minute long like you, fights and they've happened consistently throughout the game. Then I might go minus 32 seconds Sunder cooldown or if they have a lot of strength heroes, it's really hard to get them low health in the first place. Sometimes the best option is to get low yourself, swap their cooldown, uh, swap their health, get it off um, and then do a couple of right clicks and finish them off. But that's obviously a lot riskier than just taking a range and then hit them throughout the entire fight consistently, right? So yeah, that's it for the skill build. All right, so for the starting items on, on Terrorblade, I usually start with uh, two sets of tangos, two iron branches for stats, a quelling blade to last hit creeps easier, and slippers of agility. Uh, there are a few variations you can go uh, depending on your matchup in the offlane, if you're a little more familiar with how uh, just the, mostly how the position one roll uh, goes along because I'd say the starting items is roughly similar uh, in terms of agility carries, uh, especially agility melee carries in the position one roll. You can uh, take away this uh, slivers of agility, substitute it for two more iron branches, say if you need extra sustain in the lane, um, and then you can use uh, some of these branches with uh, the extra pair of tangos. Again, the iron branch is the most cost efficient item in the game. So just um, the, the plus four all attributes in lane can still really help you a lot in, in terms of the stats. Another way uh, you can do this is also uh, by taking a healing self, 
and then uh, you'll be just as fine if you need extra. If not, you can get rid of one healing salve and then still get the Slippers of Agility into the lane. Alright, now on to the early game. Uh, the Slippers of Agility, of course, built into your first Wraith Band. I've seen some guides and some games where you can go one Wraith Band instead of two. I prefer two because at some point in the mid game you have this awkward position where you have um, an empty slot because you end up building a Yasha, you finish your magic one so these branches uh, no longer take up uh, space in your inventory and then after you usually build it depends how when you want to build the wand if you're uh, fighting of course then take the wand but you can usually can delay this wand when you go for, go and farm and instead you get the power treads to escalate your farm into the yasha manta or sny that's a big question i typically ask myself am i getting hit a lot if i am sny if not manta style um that's really how easy it is manta style also provides a lot in terms of roots if there are no roots on the enemy team then i usually go sny bkb and then it's a satanic satanic sny being a very strong combination manta style being a, a defensive item in, the, in a way as well allows you to go a little uh more greedy in terms of the second item into the butterfly uh, but you still want to pick up that black king bar because of uh, that spell immunity you want to be getting your right clicks off you don't want to be bursted in fights due to magic damage uh, you don't want to have to worry about that you just deal a shit ton of damage as it is because you are motherfucking terrorblade so these are the two streams of core items that i recommend for terrorblade um, if you start with a manta just basically stick through with the rest if you start with s and y stick through with the rest there are again other situational items such as Diffusal Blade. This is a very situational item. I say you buy this at the top maybe 2% of the time. Um, I could probably just remove this from, from the uh, guide altogether. Uh, but I, I, I chose to left it in because I, I did try this out I think, believe once or twice out of my past uh, 30 games. And it did, it did work quite nicely to slow down the target. Uh, of course it always works against heroes uh, that have rely on mana so like bristleback as well um so just keep in mind it's a matchup dependent thing so two percent of the time you can buy this uh if you want to try it out for fun like i did do it it'll still work hurricane pike is another situational item this is definitely more common because it has a much better progression system um than most items i'd say on terrorblade other than like yasha hurricane pike you can start with the dragon lance right uh, it gives you agility and strength, which Terrorblade thrives on, he means. It also gives you extra attack range on your Metamorphosis, which can become handy. Monkey King Bars, another situational item, uh, if they have a PA or any type of evasion. Again, you, MKB is a great uh, resource to turn to. If it's late game, you can alt for a Divine Rapier, again, very risky. And uh, also a TB not being the greatest, uh, Rapier Slash. Aegis Carrier due to meta Morphus. Uh, once he's out of meta, he's basically useless in fights. I have Scotty, another situational item, the last one I have on my list. Um, it really comes down to the amount of HP regen the enemy team has. If they have any lifesteal, like any heroes or cores that depend on lifesteal, such as, oh, lifestealer or uh, say troll warlord, uh, uses uh, that a lot with his ulti and big strength heroes. So like Kanka, Pudge to reduce their HP regen. Uh, I Scotty can be a big contributing factor. It also makes Terrorblade um, more buffier and plus 25 all attributes is pretty nice as well. Luxury items, Daedalus. Again, what I mean by luxury is just pretty much straight damage items and you won't need until like late late game. Uh, you can pick up Daedalus earlier, say if you, uh, like I would say maybe a possible alternative with Butterfly at this stage of the game, we can go with like Manta style Daedalus. But again, it's a greedier side. It just provides damage. Lee's Butterfly gives you some evasion. Abyssal Blade, I've seen it used uh, late, late game, probably around 40, 50 minute mark type. If you need to get on top of an enemy cord that's quite squishy, and uh, such as like a sniper or a Drow Ranger to get in the black line, or just using that stun basically to have an upper hand, the Abyssal Blade helps a lot and it sometimes is your only option. 
Bloodthorn. I don't think I've ever went Bloodthorn in a game, to be quite honest with you, but it can always be a possibility. Any uh, position one can technically pick up a Bloodthorn, uh, provides extra attack speed damage. Uh, the intelligence, again, is not a huge thing on, on Terrorblade. It's more so just the active that it provides, it's the silence. A silence for five seconds, especially in late, late game situations where BKB start becoming five seconds long, you can get a Bloodthorn on them afterwards. Uh, they have a five second silence, they can't run away from you, uh, you basically kill them because you deal so much fucking damage. And I added one more section for showing off. Again, this is ultra late game, uh, 60 plus minutes. Sometimes you get 50 plus minutes if you're really well ahead in the game in terms of farm. Refresh orb being one just to reset the cooldown on your meta. Meta is so damn strong. This refresh orb can actually be a difference maker in games for sure, especially if enemies don't expect it. Uh, say for example you're defending your high ground, they come at you, uh, you pop your first meta, win the fight just barely, you're pushing their high ground, they're like oh we can take these motherfuckers, you pop your refresher orb, pop a second meta, you win that fight, you win the game, basically. Eggs um, has a fear active ability to your meta, it only works when you have eggs and then you pop meta. You can't be while you're uh, metting and then you have eggs, you, it won't appear. And then once you do, you can have a 3.75 fear wave. It's like a circular wave that expands from Terrorblade at a certain radius and basically fears enemies. Uh, so enemies that like to come up close and personal or get on top of you, um, this is a nice way of getting them off your back and shooting back and killing them. Uh, or at least giving enough time for your team to come along and help fight with you. Last one, uh, I think is pretty straightforward. Again, pretty much any late game hero or any position one, any late game situation, you can always pick up a moon shard. It, it buffs attack speed, especially on, on heroes like Terrorblade, uh, which deals so much damage. Upping their attack speed just allows them to increase their DPS so much more throughout fights. So definitely picking it up. Usually it's uh, you're gonna synth it at this point of the game because all six slots of Terrorblade are very, 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 precious in the later stages of the game so jumping right into the laning stage here we're watching eg ramses one of the best terrorblade players in the world if not the best uh starts the lane off with a pair of tangos two iron branches a healing salve circlet and a calling blade uh he opts to go for the healing salve just because they're a uh, lane he's against which is a visage and a pango offers some burst damage so a any carry position you definitely don't want to be sitting under tower feeling super scared or waiting for your courier to bring you a salve you want to be always with the creep wave getting last hits uh not missing creeps whatsoever especially on a hero like terrorblade which really his early game is 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 his weakest part he is super super squishy early game so getting the ample amount of regen and staying in the lane farming creeps is what you need to be doing the only difference uh, from his build in the early game here is the circlet. It doesn't make a huge difference. Plus two all attributes versus the agility slippers, which gives you plus two agility. Either way, he's still going to grab his first first wraith band pretty easily. And uh, we're going to take a look at some of the little things he does in this landing stage on top of this to make it just so easy to win. So yeah, let's take a look. So first wave meets. You notice right now he just pops meta doesn't even hesitate pops meta first wave hits he wants to get last hits he wants to escalate his farm throughout the game it, it's the whole idea of terrorblade so you also notice whenever he doesn't have to last hit a creep he's opting to attack at the enemy heroes just getting them off the wave right really zoning them out establishing a lot of dominance some might say comes back finishes off a couple last hits Some basic last hitting a nice last hitting under tower as well another thing you'll notice is he put his um put his courier over here uh it's a nice habit to get into especially if the wave is up over here and this part of the lane you don't want your courier to come over and say their position four is hanging around here that's an easy pick off it's happened to me uh, a couple times but i try to get in the habit of just putting it underneath the tower and then whenever it comes back to me or if the lane is too far pushed up and then their way is pushing in uh, you can kind of just go back, get your items. Uh, you can see he uh, sends out an extra set of tangos, 
Um, he anticipates lots of harass in this lane, and rightfully so. So he sends it out, and it doesn't hurt to send out another pair of tangos, right? If it means that you're staying in lane, getting those uh, last hits, again, a whole idea of Terrorblade I cannot emphasize enough. So basic last inning under tower, uh, slightly different because of the new patch change, 7.27, higher attack speed, lower damage on the tower. Um, you notice he will like to keep, um, he likes to keep the one conjure image up at least, uh, but he never goes for three. He doesn't quite spam it off cooldown. When you get towards the mid game and you don't have as much of a mana problems and you're kind of just jungling and sending your illusions to lane, then you can spam them off cooldown to farm, but we'll get into that in the farming uh, aspect of this video. But in the laning stage, you just want to kind of keep one. Uh, two is a little bit overkill. Uh, the only time I'd say you can do more than uh, more than one is if you have meta popped. That way you can just do additional damage. And usually if you pop meta level three, it's because you have high, very high kill potential and you can get a kill. So, and you'll, you'll see that. So in, in level three, uh, meta goes from 20 bonus damage to 40 bonus damage quite literally doubles and if it applies to his illusions which does he also gains that 30 percent extra and he that's per illusion so he he's has an amazing uh level three spike and with the slows from uh, wyvern he can definitely close the gap and probably get a kill so we're just gonna keep watching here player perspective it's a tango notice how he's also another very important thing to do in a tough lane like this where he can get harassed back and forth he tries to creep aggro this is something i abuse so much in my games any position one hero should just abuse so much all you basically do you right click uh the enemy hero when you're in range of the enemy creeps and then you walk backwards just one click walk backwards it's like a, it's a pretty decent range. I would say it's about this radius here. Um, you right click a hero, walk backwards, the creeps will follow you and you can bring it closer. It just allows you to be in a safer position when you're last in creeps. Pops the salve. And then of course it's about the best idea to have your, uh, Creep wave under tower because now your lane's gonna push, but he has a uh, an immortal support, so he should pull. Any support should pull. That is definitely something else I recommend though doing a lot though is looking at your creeps and practicing just lastening under tower. It's such a vital skill. If you have a shitty lane, you can sometimes just creep aggro the creeps under the tower where you know the enemy offlaner won't push because of the threat of the tower uh you have extra armor extra hp regen uh so you're in a much safer place plus of course the tower itself uh, provides damage so uh last thing under tower if you can gra drag with creeps in of course it pushes the wave in but if you have a support consistently pulling for you it's sometimes a very valid option um especially if you're a very squishy core like terribly So you see the level 3 meta, he's taking use of it, and gets a kill right away. Like, like at level 3, he is already just doing so much bloody damage, it's insane. The stack. He could probably farm it with the uh, help of the Wyvern, but he's got the wave, which is a lot better. Always farm the wave if you can. He's chilling. He's not contesting too hard because he still understands that he's a pretty squishy character. Um, just focusing on the lane. Notice another thing you can do to last it easier in lane. Oh, a little bit of a, a glitch there. You can select both of your illusions. Sometimes I have a hotkey. Um, for me, it's F1 on my keyboard that uh, selects all units that I uh, have control over, including my main hero. And uh, you can kind of stutter the last hit to sync uh, the illusions to last hit at the same time your uh, your hero does. So for me, my, my key is S. Here, the cancel current action button is S. 
it basically allows you to stutter your last hit and if you do that with both your illusion and your hero selected you can uh, slash at the same time so that it's not out of sync but it's perfectly in sync and then you get the 73 plus 30 percent of 73 attack the last hit So he opts for the one nice and early. I think it's a pretty good option considering that uh, Pango can, uh, it's not so much Pango, it's actually more of Visage, but Pango can also provide uh, quite a bit with his swashbuckle um, and lane. And even just seeing how the lane is going, uh, the way the way it's being played, they, they're playing very aggressive. It's, it's quite fighting. A terrible lane usually prefers more of a farming, but he's still doing an amazing job. He's winning this lane pretty hard. I mean, 30 CS at uh, 6 minutes is pretty great. Pops his meta. Visage over steps. Sleep coming in from the Elder Titan. And another kill coming in. Like, really just great, um... Great attack moving is what contributed to that kill. So what I mean by attack moving, uh, if we go back a couple seconds here. So... Pops meta. Uh, there's a little replay bug but notice how if he was standing here just right clicking this visage would probably get away he would come out this way or he might even be able to escape up here but the fact that uh ramsey's after each uh, auto attack he kind of moves forward and then so it's kind of like you have an option on your keyboard uh, attack move a the best way to do this you kind of just right click a right click a right click a right in this area and you walk towards it, auto attack, walk towards the enemy hero, and auto attack. There's also an option in your settings. All right, so I found the option, it's under options, advanced options, and right here, uh, smart attack move. If you enable that, basically wherever your cursor is, and when you click your force attack, so it's usually your deny button, uh, which is A, um, I think on default, uh, wherever your cursor is, it'll attack the nearest unit, enemy unit uh, from your cursor. So the way he does it, he right clicks, so his hero moves, and then he hits A in the same spot of his cursor near the visage. And after each auto attack, of course, you have to have some uh, experience with uh, the cast animation or how, how fast Terrorblade attacks. Um, but you can get a feeling of that after a couple of games. And it all, it's all just comes down to practice. So yeah, he picks up the kill, makes huge use of the now level 3 Metamorphosis, which is, again, an additional 20 bonus damage. And yeah, that's basically the landing stage. He won that pretty easily. And we'll move on to farming. All right, we're gonna get to back to Ramsey's in a bit, but for now we're just gonna, I just thought we'd get into a nice little private server, kind of show you a couple hotkeys that I use that allow me to farm and micro better. So yeah, without further ado, let's, let's get started here. So um, to spawn illusion, of course, W, and then to go between the illusion and my hero, um, it's nice to have an option that can select your hero. So, so for me, it's one. Basically, just controls only your hero. As you can see, only my hero is moving. And whenever I am my camera somewhere else, if I double tap one, I go back to my main hero. I also have a bind that selects all controlled units. F1. Now my illusion and my main hero are selected. So if I move around, you can tell that they both move spot another one now if I have my camera is somewhere else and I double tap F1 though it'll still go to my main hero um, so it's pretty useful um, especially for like PL and Naga who have even more illusions than Terrorblade uh, especially just to kind of know where your your main hero is it's, it's pretty useful and then when you get into fights and stuff like that so you make sure that all your illusions and your main hero are attacking the same target you just have one single bind and then you just right click or attack the one hero you want to attack. Uh, then there's one more that maybe some people don't use. Uh, depends if you play any microwing heroes slightly. Uh, to advanced hotkeys, under advanced hotkeys, you can see select all other units. I have it bound to my mouse five. Um, it selects all units that are underneath your control other than your main hero. So. The way I use this to micro and farm is that I hold one, right, or double tap one, I see my hero, I'm moving it, and then to go back to my illusion, I double tap my mouse button uh, if my illusion's there, which it's not, so we're going to spawn a new one. So say I'm controlling my main hero, now I can 
change the camera, go over to my other illusion, back to my main hero, I'm walking, other illusion, and my main hero, and main illusion, and yeah, that's basically it. So even if I spawn another illusion, I can control those two illusions together while I just have my main hero. And normally you like to keep your two illusions together as Terrorblade. Uh, they can push together really well. They're pretty squishy, but together they do a lot of damage and can really push out waves and stuff like that. So yeah, that's basically that. Uh, a couple things that I like doing as well is sending out clarities on a regular basis. I like to send out clarities though. As you can tell, I have like a bit of a mana issue. I only spawned like maybe three illusions there and I'm already at like two thirds mana. So it's really important. I do this on a lot of heroes that I farm with as a carry. Um, using your abilities to escalate your farm is massive. Even as Terrorblade, some people very, very much hesitate to pop meta to farm. The thing is, you're not going to be using it. Literally, within the late early game to mid game portion of the game, you're not going to be using it at all. So you might as well use it just to escalate your farm. So yeah, I pop this maybe at least two, three times in that stage of the game just to up my farm. Especially when I was on Radiant, I would take advantage of the ancient creeps being right here. Um, it's nice, easy, I'd go from the lane, I'd pop meta, I'd go here, finish off this camp, go here, and then back to the lane. And if the tier saw me pop with popped meta, they'd be like, ah, fuck, I'm getting out of here, I don't want them to touch me, you know what I mean? So then you just finish off the wave, push in the wave. Another th easy thing to do too, uh, you have the bonus damage from meta, take your illusions, take your meta, push the tower. Doesn't hurt. Just be wary, right? You are a bit squishy, but I'm saying do this play if you see like four enemies show top or some shit. Try to force a rotation, um, and if you don't see them anymore, then you might be thinking, hey, they might be TPing back. But otherwise, if there's like a fight going on on the other side of the map, you're just free to farm. Instead, if you have meta up, take meta, push the tower, get the free tower. Uh, just gain some map control. Well, not so much map control on this side of the map, but say if you're pushing, um, especially once you get out of the dead lane, you move to this off lane here and push this tower, this will gain you a lot more map control. It gives you, gains access to these two camps right here. Uh, so yeah, basically uh, it's a little bit of this, just back and forth. Uh, again, these are not tips I made up myself. These are uh, tips and tricks I've adapted from like pros and stuff. Uh, so I just kind of go back and forth like this. Double tap one to get to my main hero. It's gonna last hit those creeps, so I don't have to worry about it. Meanwhile, my illusion, I can focus on last hitting over here, right? So attack the tower. This guy just finished attacking the creep, so I can go over here, attack this creep camp. Meanwhile, focus back onto this. Right, and that's basically just like a basic micro. Um, so I double tap my mouse button, double tap my uh, select hero button, which is one. I kind of just go back and forth to get used to that. Talking about neutral items, <laughs> it just reminded me. Uh, it's actually hilarious. All right, so neutral items, especially uh, this stage of the game, it's probably just be tier one items I'm gonna talk about, but uh, this Iron Talon is still, they nerfed it in 7.27, it's still crazy good, crazy good. You think about it, 15 attack speed, two armor, but the active that chops removes 40%, it used to be 50. Uh, take this to an Ancient Cream Camp, and you can use it on the Ancients. Don't forget, and it literally allows you to take the Ancients so much easier. Alright, so that's it for the farming and micro portion of the tutorial. Again, it's important to keep your hero in the jungle where it's safer usually. Um, if it's obviously safer to keep your hero in the lane and keep it in the lane and put your illusions in the jungle, but like 99% of the time, literally, you're going to keep your illusions at lane where it's a little bit riskier and then play your uh, hero in the jungle. Alright, this is Ramsey's Terrorblade. We're back to the same replay. Kind of going to take a fight analysis into this one. Uh, a couple things to note, this is towards the later stages of the game. Um, but right now, Ramsey's is a fucking beast. 28k net worth, 39 minutes. 521 fucking CS. That is ridiculous. If you guys can get to this, you will 100,000% move up in MMR. Uh, being this uh, this many last hits at this stage of the game is wicked. I cannot replicate it even. Uh, but it, it just it just goes to show with practice you can really get to this level. And I mean Ramsey's is a pro. He's the best of the best. So what do you expect? Uh, 
All right, one thing that I, I wanted to mention though, uh, towards the end of my landing stage uh, section of the video, you probably noticed that he was building into a drums, and the drums was one of the uh, items I did not mention. He would go uh, to go on Terrorblade, and that's only recently because I, I have not tried it out myself. And it's something that got changed in the last patch, and this is a 7.27 replay, uh, so fairly new, a couple days ago. And so Ramsey's just, uh, yeah, he's experimenting in this uh, in this clip. I will leave the match ID down below if you want to check it out for yourself. So the reason why he picked up the drums, in the last patch they changed the active, uh, gives plus 45 attack speed and 13% uh, movement speed to nearby allies for 6 seconds. It also applies to your illusions as well. So if you get this onto your illusions, of course you get a lot more additional damage because a lot of Terrorblaze damage is his illusions as well. Um, so the farming, the items, the uh, skills, it all comes down to this point of the game where he's really at his peak. He gets really, really strong, dishes a shit ton of damage. And in this game, as you can tell, his skill build is slightly different from my uh, normally recommended. But if, if you can see, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, level 10, he picks the plus 20 movement speed over 16% evasion. It's because the enemy team doesn't really have that many right clickers, right? Uh, plus 20, 250 health, and he goes plus 8 all stats. The reasoning behind this I see is to avoid the burst damage. And it's 100% uh, what it is here, right? Like OD with his ulti, Visage has burst, Tiny, this is a carry mid Tiny, so uh, he, he maxed out uh, his maxed out avalanche throw, can deal a shit ton of burst damage, and that's something that's kind of a weakness of Terrorblades. If he can get locked down or bursted before he can get a Sunder off, then he's in a pretty bad... Uh, Pretty bad spot so he skilled around it he kind of itemized it around it as well with the uh, eye of scotty so yeah it's uh, really nice to see how it all comes together and it's a very logical process that goes through his mind when he picks his uh, skills and talents and uh, items overall the only thing i don't agree with is his ages of immortal but i guarantee you in an official match you would not have this it would probably go to the dk uh reason being again is this uh metamorphosis Right, if he pops it in a fight and he dies and then he uh, comes back alive, he no longer has meta and you are much, much weaker and have way less reach if you're not in range form. And you can tell, you you can even try out Terrorblade for yourself to know that it is not good to fight when you're in a melee form. You want to have meta up and you only fight when you have meta up. I guess one exception was if you get a refresher shard, he doesn't have a refresher shard, that way you get a second meta going. But that's the only way I could see you pick up an Aegis. All right, so let's watch out the fight. Uh, just, yeah, let's take it through. So he notices the tiny, just amazing uh, mini map awareness. He, uh, he had nothing to look at, right? He was just kind of pushing the wave. So what else is he gonna look at? He's gonna look at his mini map. Uh, just to be aware of what's going on. Ends up being the entire team is up here. And just, uh, just watch his target. Ability, right? He pops his BKB. Lich itemizes against the Terrorblade with the Ghost Scepter, so he can't attack him uh, very nicely. A couple buybacks, he kites out from the group of three on the high ground. Comes back up. Nearly looks like he's gonna die, but his teammates come into health. DK's in there as well, and just look how much damage he deals. Unfortunately, there was a couple pauses in this fight, uh, for whatever reason, but... He has a fuckload of damage. There is the OD ult I'm talking about, right? He doesn't take this plus 25 health skill, he's dead. It just goes to show that the talents really come along big way in this fight. Another pause. Again, these boys are freaking trolls. Again, takes a big hit. He's at 89 HP. And makes a super fucking clutch Sunder to avoid the tiny tree toss. And that's basically game, because they end up, uh, they threaten the tier fours, they buy back, and then they take the rest of the towers. They have a final fight, which they're already in advantage of, because they're down one hero. They win the game. So, it just goes to show, like, he literally just farmed for, like, 80% of the game. But this is terribly in a nutshell. You literally just farm, you get freaking strong as shit, you get your items, and these items, these damage items, these uh, these items are amazing in this in this type of uh, situation, right? They have strength heroes, so he, uh, I Scotty was actually worked out really nicely this game too. And yeah, just everything makes a lot of sense when he came to fighting. So yeah, 
normally you want to be attacking the support but if you can't get to the support that's fine don't get kited just shoot the, the nearest guy towards you especially with items like these you do a fuck out of damage you can stand up and you can hit them in the face and that's the whole idea of terrorblade and that's really all i gotta say with the fighting so i have three tips and tricks for you today they're probably the things you don't know about and if you do know about them then you probably forget to implement them sometimes in your games especially in the heat of the moment and i can totally understand that uh, it also happens to me too it happens to everyone uh, even happened to ramses in the game there are definitely things you can pinpoint and critique uh, no one's gameplay is absolutely perfect you can always make your uh, gameplay better but these tips and tricks and just getting in the mindset of making sure what can I be doing at this moment uh, in every single point in the game can just allow you to become a better person right just taking a little more macro perspective on things within the game so the first tip and trick I have for you is to spread out your illusions it seems pretty straightforward but your illusions are a very large portion of your damage as Terrorblade, especially when sieging towers. You can avoid collateral damage from your illusions and just them killing it all together if you can avoid the AoE spells from the enemies, especially when you don't have vision. So my second tip for you is that you can use Sunder on your illusions. And this kind of ties into the first point that I made is if you can kind of avoid your illusions from taking that collateral damage from AoE spells, you can still have it as an option if for whatever reason the enemy heroes are spell immune because Sunder does not pierce spell immunity. And also you don't want to necessarily Sunder your teammates at the beginning of a fight if they're going to be initiating on you because that's usually how it works when you're sieging a tower. Uh, the, 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 your allies won't be happy about that, let's just say it. My third tip and trick, I'm going to show it right here on the screen. Basically what you can do is you can hold shift and every and then the attack move that I was talking about earlier um, in the laning stage when Ramses was chasing to catch the kill how he was attack moving forward you can kind of use that same a button underneath settings your attack move and you can hold shift and a and it'll allow you to set places where your illusions can go ahead of time so you'll see right right from the screen as soon as one illusion is done one camp it'll move to the next camp automatically once it finishes attacking the units in that area it'll move to the next one so basically you're just setting up a queue of actions that your illusions will do it can make farming those illusions a lot faster that way you don't have to always keep track of them i should probably get used to that i don't use it as much i like to be um active always knowing where my illusions and my main hero are and managing both at the same time that way i have more knowledge of where they actually are because if you kind of just do a shift a and then you lose track of your illusion then you think they're nearby when you try to go take a fight but really there's some camp that's on the other side of the map then you deal less damage and then you'll overestimate your capabilities so it's kind of a preference thing but it's always there as an option shift a allows you to basically make microing easier you already set your illusions to where they want to go so those are my three tips and tricks i hope you guys enjoyed that concludes this terrorblade guide um if you have any other questions please leave them down below in the comments thank you so much for watching i hope it helped a ton um that's really my goal if you want to see another guide for a hero i'll let you know if i can play the hero first but i would be more than happy to make another guide uh to this level of depth um in the future and yeah be sure to check out my other videos um i stream also monday tuesday wednesday thursday and saturday sunday at 8 p.m eastern time so come say hi at twitch.tv slash furious with a 10 underscore gg don't forget to like comment and subscribe i'll see y'all later Bye bye